Ladies and gentlemen, it has taken tremendous courage, effort, and determination to leave behind us the old continent that was historically profiled with intense negativity. The Africa whose people neither are there to be seen or heard has summoned the confidence and readiness to confront, to confront hard facts, engage truthfully, and forge a common position on critical issues that project a new, bold, radically transformative voice into the global discourse. And let me say here that we have discussed potential. And it is true, we need to have a conversation about Africa's potential. Why? Because we have been profiled negatively. The continent of disease, war, poverty. But we are stepping forward to say, look here, Africa is the continent with 60% of the world's renewable energy assets. Whether you talk about wind, whether you talk about solar, geothermal, hydropower. Number two, we're saying Africa is the continent that has 40% of the world's critical minerals for energy transition. Whether you talk about nickel, cobalt, lithium, manganese, this is where those reserves are. Number three, this is the continent, the youngest continent with a median age of 19. 25% of the world's population will be living in this continent by 2050. We will have 40% of the world's workforce by 2100. This is the continent number four that has two thirds of the world's uncultivated arable land that can transform through smart agriculture into the store, the production store of the world. And number five, this is the continent that is the lungs of the world. We have the largest natural carbon sequestration infrastructure. In fact, we dare say, in, if there was a company for collecting garbage globally, and I'm talking about gab, uh, carbon garbage, Africa would have the largest shares because we have the largest lungs. The only problem is that those who produce the garbage refuse to pay their bills and profile the company as broke when it is actually them who have refused to pay the bills. So that is our continent. It's a continent of tremendous potential. And that is why Chinua Ajebe told us that until the lion learned the art of writing, all stories glorified the hunter. I think we have learned to write, I think we have learned the art of writing. And that is why we are going to write our own narrative. That is the continent that we belong to. Let me also say another thing, opportunity. Yes, this climate crisis, climate change, and the climate crisis that comes with it, yes, it is true, we contributed the least. Yes, it is also true, we are suffering the most. But in this crisis is Africa's opportunity. And that is what we want to focus on. Africa's opportunity to unlock the tremendous resources that we have for green energy transition. And we must exploit this opportunity. 
And number three, so that I conclude, is that this is the continent that has the highest investment potential. We are only limited by two things. Number one, we are limited, as I said earlier in my statement, by high interest rates for development capital. Many of our countries, and we are here, and they say figures don't lie. Nine countries are already in debt, in debt distress in our continent, over the cliff. Thirteen countries are classified as uh, high risk. And another 17 countries are classified as moderate risk. And the biggest contributor to debt distress in our continent is high interest rates. We pay five times more than others. Meaning that in fact, the architecture is set up in a manner that if you borrow, it will be difficult for you to pay. And that is why we need a conversation, and a very candid conversation, and we're saying this in all honesty around how do we get concessional funding? How do we pay as much as others are paying? How do we get Africa away from paying five times more? And I asked in this gathering, we're not asking to be favored. We're not asking for to be treated differently. We want a fair financial system that treats everybody equally. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is not too much to ask a fair international financial architecture is not a fair proposition or an unfair proposition to make. Number two, many of our countries are headed into debt distress because of climate change. Let's be honest, we are suffering the most, whether it is in the Sahel, with drought, whether it is in the Horn of Africa with drought, whether it is in South Africa and the southern part of our continent with cyclones, and we are saying the suffering is across the globe, but we carry the biggest brunt. I'll give you, I'll contextualize this. And because of climate change, we are forced to divert resources that are meant for economic growth into dealing with the effects of climate change. I will contextualize this. In Kenya, we lost two and a half million heads of livestock in northern part of Kenya. Combined with Ethiopia and Somalia and Djibouti, we lost nine and a half million heads of livestock. So what did I have to do in Kenya? So in Kenya, I've had to increase resources meant for school feeding from a million and a half children in school under school feeding, we've had to scale up this year to four million kids in school to be put under school feeding. And we've had to rearrange the budget to provide for that. So when we say climate change is destroying our economies, we are not making statements. We are making statements of fact.